Mark Sanchez joins us on behalf of uh, Sleep Number, the leader in uh, sleep health. As we know, of course, uh, my sleep number setting is uh, it's jumped up to 100, by the way. Uh, a month long program with NFL legends, the uh, Sleep 30 Challenge. He'll talk about that coming up here in a moment. Mark, good to talk to you again. What's your favorite Pete Carroll story? Dan P. <laughs> How we doing, man? Good. Uh, let's see. Well, before Pete Carroll, 6'2 and a little change, probably 235. Don't judge me. Wow. Wow. Don't judge me. Okay. I'm, I'm getting older. I'm getting a lot of sleep. I'm not quite as active. <laughs> uh, you- oh, man. Pete Carroll. I think there's two really good ones. One was in the Rose Bowl. The other one was the night before that press conference, that infamous press conference that uh, made it look like him and I hated each other. Um which wasn't the case. Little did people know the night before that press conference, we were in my apartment uh, on Ellendale next to USC's campus. Uh, let's see. Shoot. Apartment 313, baby. And we were eating in and out burgers uh, till like two, three in the morning, just talking about everything. And he knew that I had pretty much decided to leave and he was still recruiting like hell to keep me there. And uh, so that was a that was a night where I didn't get my full night's rest and sleep number wouldn't be thrilled about that. OK, but then you had the press conference. So why did that happen if you guys had already talked this out the night before? So I think here's now that I can you know look back in, in hindsight and retrospect and all that. He he didn't say anything like I don't like him. I don't think um, he's a good player you know, we're, we're not happy for him. We don't want him to do well. He never said anything like that, but as far as those meeting or uh, press conferences have gone to that point, it was always, you know, Johnny's leaving for the NFL. Well, man, whatever NFL team gets Johnny good for them. He's awesome. We love him and we wish him the best. Now, Pete eventually said nice things like that, but the first thing he said was, and he said it the night before, I don't agree with the decision, okay? Which is fine. He can have his own opinion. And we said that to each other the night before. I said, coach, no hard feelings. I get it. I just, this is where I'm at. Here's what I want to do. Cool. And he's like, well, you got to look at the statistics. You know, rookie quarterbacks, blah, 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 when they come out early. And he did all his research, credit to him. He knew exactly what he was talking about. So he gave an opinion on my decision and then backed it up with a bunch of nice, fluffy stuff, which is fine. But everybody focused on that opinion. And because he gave that those data points saying, you know, rookie quarterbacks who leave early, they don't do this, they don't do that, blah, blah, blah. Well, that was that was all fine, too. But nobody was used to hearing that. So once they heard it, they're like, oh, dude, he hates him. Oh, these guys don't like each other. What a jerk, you know. And it wasn't really like that. It was just, hey, this is his opinion. Here's why he thinks that. And it's all good. Do you think you could have been more successful or a more sustainable career if you'd had lower expectations? You were going to a team that was playoff ready, championship ready, whereas Zach Wilson is going to a Jets team that we don't have great expectations. Sure. So put yourself in, in that position with Zach and how, how beneficial can that be uh, to his development or maybe even detrimental? Uh, you know, I think there's, there's two ways to go on this, right? You nailed it. I went into a team that picked that was picking 15 or 16 overall, which means you're middle of the pack. They just missed the playoffs with Brett Favre and, you know, one bicep tendon. Like this guy was hanging on for dear life. I just golfed with him about a month and a half ago. And he told a bunch of those stories, which were incredible, by the way. But so that's where that team was. They had great veteran leadership. We needed a couple receivers. We ended up getting Braylon Edwards, Antonio Holmes. Um, And they had a tight end. They had a running back. We drafted a running back in Sean Green. So this is a team that was built to win immediately. And we were so good on defense. They won in spite of me multiple times my rookie year. Like, I have no shame in admitting that. I threw five picks against Buffalo, and we we took the game to overtime, and we rushed for, like, 200-something yards. Like, that doesn't happen, right? So I went to a place where they expected to win immediately. Now, I loved it, but it also set the bar really high. There was only one way to go. When you get to the AFC Championship game, your first two years, there's only one way to go. Really two ways, but one's a lot easier. We're straight down, right? So either you go to the Super Bowl and compete in the Super Bowl 
and win or lose, whatever, or you don't make that game and now you're not as good. And you know this New York media, it's very sensationalized. It's best or worse, a very superlative. Um, so that's just kind of the way it went. Now, if you go in to that market, maybe with less expectations, sure, that's fine. I understand that argument. Let the guy sit, let him learn, let him, you know, have a solid veteran ahead of him and, and kind of groom him. The Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith idea. Great. But you don't have that time in New York, right? All these guys that they have there, <clears throat> it's like it's like the Little League team that stays together for like five years, right? And, and then by the time they hit high school, they don't even have to give like pickoff signs anymore. They just know by body language, like, boom, we know what to do. I know when it's, you know, when we're thinking about bunting. I know when to drag bunt. I know when to steal. I know all this stuff because we've done it for so long. You think the New York media is going to give them that kind of time? No. I mean, they have a lot of young guys, and I hope they do. I hope they keep expectations realistic. But, I mean, that's just a tall task there. So, uh, you know, the most important thing for them is just little victories along the way. Block out the media as best you can. Let that thing marinate. And I think, I think if anybody's got a shot to do it, it's Zach Wilson. I really like him. I liked him coming out in the draft process. He's got a couple things to clean up, I would think, in the pocket just – Every once in a while, there's a routine play that I'd like him to just keep it routine, right? I don't need, you know, the, the sports center highlight uh, every single drop back, right? But when it's time, you know when to flip that switch and be Zach Wilson and show us that amazing play when it's fourth down, when you got to scramble, when it, you know, the game's on the line. But when it's just a wide open, you know, easy grounder to second base, just throw the guy out at first. And I think his quarterback coach, Greg Knapp, is going to really, really help with that because he's been with some of the best in the league with Peyton Manning, some of the best technicians that that know how to keep the game simple when it's supposed to be simple. And then when it's time to, like I said, when it's time to, you know, to go off and, and do something special and show me who Zach Wilson is, you'll know exactly when that is and you'll flip the switch and do it. He's Mark Sanchez, the former NFL quarterback. How do you explain Tom Brady then? Brady told me many, many years ago, if he had been drafted in the first round, he probably wouldn't have made it. So... He's the greatest quarterback of all time who might yeah. not have made it. Now, that he might be being humble, but I think he said, I wasn't ready, and they would have asked me to be ready as a first-round quarterback. Sure. And I think one of the biggest things for Tom Brady is the amount of sleep he gets. He even preaches that, Dan. <laughs> okay? Sleep. I mean, he's got to be on a sleep number. That guy's got energy for days. So um, I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. But uh, – there's just a lot of expectation when it comes to that first pick overall. There's, there's so much expected of you that, um, you know, you're, you're, regardless of your circumstances, you're expected to do well. And, and here's a great example. When I'm at Sam Darnold's Pro Day and uh, he's coming out of USC and they're like, I don't know, he might go to Cleveland, he might go here, he might go there. We're hoping he goes to the Jets like you. Like, that would be so cool, you know, USC to the Jets. And I'm talking with his parents and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, listen, I love my time in New York. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm like, but the Jets are just not very good right now. Neither is Cleveland at the time. But I'm like, either way, like, if you're going in that top five, unless somebody trades into the top five like the Jets did for me, expectations should not be here. Like, you're drafting that early for a reason. So for Tom, I think he got to fly under the radar. He got to learn under Drew Bledsoe. He got to... Um, make a bunch of mistakes in practice that nobody ever saw. Maybe internally they corrected, obviously, but he got to run through situation after situation after situation against one of the best defenses perennially all the time, right? Before he even got out on the field. And that is uh, invaluable when it comes to grooming a quarterback. You want reps. You want reps in real situations, not seven on seven or seven on, you know, air you know, passing lines and warmups, those don't count. Like once you get to that level, come on, dude, that's just expected. You're in a shorts, you're in a pair of shorts and t-shirt and maybe a helmet. Like the ball shouldn't touch the ground. That's just the way it goes. That's just where we're starting. Okay. Now you get a defense on the field. Now you get situations and the way they run practice, they don't just run plays up there. They're running situation after situation. Okay. Backed up, sudden change, third downs, Red zone, goal line. This is the game is made up of all these tiny little situations, and he became a master of them. And now he's got this Rolodex in his head of playing against one of the best defenses that can take the ball away from you like that. And boom, now I know what to do. 
when the game's on and they, and they eased them into it. Remember when, um, Oh my God, how am I blanking on the coaches? Charlie Weiss, Charlie Weiss was running two back, you know, drop back, go look at his first Super Bowl win. He hit one big pass on a deep cross to branch or somebody. Everything else was a check down to Kevin Falk. Everything else, the ball didn't travel over six yards. So I'm not saying that's easy. That's hard. That's really hard to do. But he did it. And then he, he got that confidence. And it was like, oh, I can do this. Now let me try and fit a ball in. Oh, okay, maybe that didn't work. Okay, let me fit a ball in here. Got it. Boom. I know I can do that. I remember this situation from practice, blah, blah, blah. And he just became a master. And he's, you know, he's got to be part cyborg other than the one day he had a couple too many beers, right? Like this guy's just incredible. <laughs> so um, he, he just became a master of those situations and he had the time to develop in the right place. Tell us what you're doing with uh, sleep number, the sleep 30 challenge. So basically it's from June 14th to July 11th, 30 straight days trying to compete with all the NFL legends. Is that cool or what, Dan? They call you an NFL legend as soon as you retire, whether your career was legendary <laughs> or not. There could have been legendary moments. That's awesome. Are, are uh, you calling yourself a legend? Well, as long as Tracy Perlman at the NFL says I'm a legend, then fine. Okay. I'll take the label. Right. Yeah. But um, basically, it's 30 straight days. I'm competing with other NFL legends. You plug in your uh, sleep number bed to your app. You get it all configured, and then essentially it'll track all your sleep, hit you with data points on restless sleep, when you're getting into REM sleep, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the only issue for me, and I'm not making any excuses because I'm a competitor and I want to win this thing, but I got this child, okay, Dan? He's, he's four and a half. He'll be five in November, and he'll come in at any hour of the night, and I just see it on my data <laughs> points, just a big spike of restless sleep because there's movement in the bed, all yeah. right? And this guy will come in with Hulk cans in the middle of the night and just boom, <laughs> Hulk smash. So, and wake dad up. But on the nights he doesn't do that, I get a, a full, you know, restful sleep, the, the full eight hours. Uh, but the idea behind this challenge is during the four weeks, they break it up into, you know, a couple different coaching points, more or less, that we learned this in the NFL later in my career. Uh, but things to avoid before you go to bed, uh, blue light from your cell phone, computer, or TV, um, you know, making sure instead of doing stuff like that, let's read a book, let's, you know, do a little Sudoku, dim the lights a little bit, have a nice, cool, uh, uh, dark environment to sleep in and really keep the bed, you know, for sleeping type thing. So it's, um, it's great information and, and it really does help me recharge. And the next day I got to go, got to go be super dad. So, uh, and, and, you know, from raising kids, kids don't care what time you went to bed or how much sleep you got, they're ready to rock the next day. So I got to be ready as well. It's great to talk to you again, and uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck with Sleep Number. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, right, buddy. That's Mark Sanchez, former NFL quarterback, USC quarterback.